for a hundred days from the election now, less than you know. I uh, I have a hard time believing the Wayfair thing based on the rush. Mostly anything dealing with Russia, I have hard time to believe. You fill seventeen hundred pages, and maybe you'll want to write more of them. I mean, everything yeah, yeah. we're talking about, you could have a page and a half. And you maybe they'd more. read. And maybe they'd read more of them too. Yeah. Because the long form discussion is is taking over these new segments, are taking over these um, spoon fed, pre packaged media sound bites that we get every day. Media. Yep. Do you think anyone on the left should have been blamed for this? The insurrection? Yeah. Yeah, I think the entire uh, media. And this is extremely dangerous to our democracy. Hey everyone, Dave here, December 1773. With me as always is Ryan. This is episode 89 of The Weekly Show, all of the week's hottest topics with a twist. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and YouTube. More importantly, follow us on the free speech alternative to YouTube, that is Rumble. Uh, like the video if you're watching on Facebook and YouTube. Rumble the video if you're watching on Rumble. If you do follow us on Facebook, we are currently running polls for content creators. They were all randomly selected. Uh, and we've done this before. I think last time we did this Candace Owens one, which I thought was a surprise. But we'll see who comes through this time. Facebook, unfortunately, uh, in their infinite amount of suck, have taken the actual poll option out. So it's one of those like it for one person, heart it for the other. Uh, either way, go there, fill those out. We'll see who the ultimate winner will end up being. Ryan... I told you there were a couple things I wanted to get into, and I didn't want to tell you about some of them. I pretty much told you about none of them. First of all, hello. But second of all, how great is it that Candace Owens won our poll and then she got to interview Trump out of all of them people? I think it probably makes sense. I think yeah. a lot of our Facebook crowd are big-time Trump supporters. Yeah, Not I just that I have anything... It's against Trump, but he was never my favorite, never my least favorite. Like you said, we always had to defend him. Yeah, I couldn't even talk politics with people about like his policies because you had to defend a guy from the entire media establishment. But yeah, it's just I thought it was a little cool that last time we did the poll, like you said, Candace Owens, you think one, and then she gets the high-profile thing. She explodes on Daily Wire, which is actually a topic this week in a weird little way. And uh, yeah, she got like the interview the former president it's probably one of the last interviews him post president is going to be allowed on the internet you know yeah yeah so. and i mean i'm sure trump saw that she won and decided that she was the one to interview her. yeah especially on our <laughs> uh ex- our well. excelling program uh but yeah for real i remember uh my history teacher telling me that one of the biggest predictors of uh presidential elections was if you ask the kids in their cl- in classrooms across america who they're voting for, who they vote for, because it's basically what their parents are going to vote for. They're the most accurate. So it's kind of like the same kind of thing that it's like it would be all the way trickled down that uh, all these people, she's the most like palatable. And yeah, uh, to sure. see, see people succeed is cool. Yeah. And uh, unlike Katanji Brown Jackson, we did not tell the, poll, uh, the, the audience that they had to vote for a black female. So uh, she won on her own merits, which was impressive. Uh, Ryan, I wanted to talk about this because... I don't think NBC, not that I don't believe in free speech, they absolutely have a right to say what they want. I don't think they they have the privilege of saying this, given the fact that they're NBC. Uh, the NBC staffers apparently are complaining about MSNBC hiring Jen Psaki because uh, they say that <laughs> apparently it tarnishes the NBC News brand. You know how they've been so upstanding in their journalism as of late, especially. Jen Saki will tarnish the brand. Why? Why? Wow, wasn't she like the greatest ever to do her position in the uh, Obama Harris Biden administration? I'm just, I'm just struggling to find how NBC who already carries the water for the Biden Harris Obama administration is somehow now worse off that one of their members are actually working for them directly as opposed to indirectly, which is how the White House usually works for media. How great is it that Obama literally was just showcasing how he does run America? And we, we <laughs> talked we talked about, like, 
couple months ago. And then here we go. Uh, uh, yeah, it does. I mean, I'm sure they didn't go into detail about this, that why they're obviously being having this feeling that's a tarnishment of the brand. Do do they actually believe that people believe that it's not propaganda? Like, is this their way of like admitting that it's propaganda in a weird way? Well, they didn't go as far to admit that, Ryan. I can tell you that is something they probably will never admit. Yeah, what uh, But they did definitely seem very concerned that obviously there's very obvious and direct ties to the White House now, which I don't know. Maybe they just want it to be more of a secret, is my guess. I mean, they did say they're going to work with social media companies combat misinformation. Uh. So what is different with them working with the media? You know, I mean, if they're they literally paid TikTok people, so yeah, Jen well, Zach going to it is weird to actually. I mean, has this ever happened? Uh, like to actually go from the secretary spokesperson, whatever it is, uh, White House uh, press secretary to an actual media reporter? Or, uh, uh, I don't know exactly direct from the White House, um, but George Stephanopoulos worked for the Clinton administration if i'm not mistaken he works over at abc mm. and i don't know is is does he seem like he's uh he's definitely biased right <laughs> i yeah, mean he definitely tires the presidential debate right so i'm just gonna just real quick just because i don't think people would actually believe me um real quick over here does anyone know at nbc what ms stands for mainstream no do you do you even know can you see the my screen it says Microsoft National Broadcasting Company. <laughs> we wouldn't want to tarnish the good name of NBC, who is totally not owned by Microsoft. Bill Gates? Are you kidding me? These people, these people are beyond parody. Like this is, they literally don't even know these things. Like NBC can't possibly. Say MB- NMSNBC is going to be so much worse off because Jen Psaki's there when they're already tied to a corporation. Now they're tied to the White House. So they're tied to both. Uh, I, I don't know. How can anybody get news from that and think it's it's even remotely actual journalism? Not that CNN's any better, but come on. I don't understand. I really don't understand like how they get away with it more than anything. But that's besides the point. Well, the only people they have to get away with it from is, well, half the country. <laughs> yeah, especially when, you know, they don't tell you certain stories and then they tell you other ones. But when they hold all the power, of course they get away with it. They have These nobody people know. This, <laughs> is, oh, I... this is no accident. The smartest thing Joe Biden has ever said was, was something he wasn't wanting to say. Uh, speaking of people who don't have the right to bitch about things... Uh, People are complaining that a leaked document shows Amazon is going to ban the words slave, living wage, and unfair from employee chat rooms. Uh, People on the left are losing their minds about this because such a major corporation is having this type of say in people's language, which, um, hello? (laughs) A school can do it. A school can do it, but a corporation can't. A school can do it, but corporation can't the twitter can do it but a corporation can't they don't the get state. To free speech we're the ones saying hey what the hell and they're and they're but when it comes to twitter and facebook and google and all these youtube and social media platforms and we're saying that you should be able to have free speech on these platforms and they're saying well, it's a private company well shut up amazon's a private company <laughs> i mean <laughs> they're, they're not a producer they're just a manufacturer what like what yeah, yeah. come on Absolutely crazy. The state can say anything it wants, bad people. Jordan Peterson literally got famous for this very thing, saying he's not going to say certain words in the University of Toronto, you know? And it's and it's fact. It's free speech. We have free speech platforms that are trying to open, and then they're shut off, sh- like shut down, cut off at the knees as a publisher, saying they promote conspiracy theorists and, quote, misinformation. Who, it's who crazy was, that they took Trump's term of fake news and turned it into misinformation and then made it corporate legal legalese to hold companies and you as a user of Facebook because you just clicked agreed on 7,000 legal pages you never read. Oh, yeah. Nobody's reading those. 
it's free, but how do they make seven trillion billion goddamn dollars a year? But then you realize they sell your data, and then I'm told it doesn't matter. Mass metadata. What meta mass metadata? But yeah, and then you hear about the algorithm <laughs> that doesn't exist, but it's literally the thing that is all the data. So how crazy it is it that Facebook changed their name to Meta, and they sell your mass metadata? <laughs> Uh, this is Ryan. This is one. That, that is the name of the program that probably gives you the algorithm. Like that might actually be the name of the algorithm. Zuckbox, though. Did you see Zuckbox? <laughs> you know the guy that talks about climate change wants NFTs and releases them when NFTs are gonna like explode climate change by like the craziest amount because of all the computer power. But the dude that's gonna make virtual reality is gonna lecture me about. It's crazy. You know, the shame is enough people don't pay attention long enough because it doesn't take long to disprove them. It's just the fact that nobody's able to do it all the time. Right. But like they just contradict themselves constantly. They say one thing and do another. It's like, how will I ever believe this? But it's like you got to tell enough people long enough for them to believe it and see it themselves. Fuck this guy, man. This may be an example of how good mass metadata is becoming. Because I read this, and this is one I really didn't want you to see ahead of time. Maybe <laughs> I showed you. I might have even showed you this ahead of time anyway. I don't remember if I sent this to you. Here's here's the thing. Uh, <laughs> this is new technology coming your way. It says, this AI can recreate your face using only your voice. <laughs> AI technology that can recreate people's faces using only voice recordings, and the results are eerily accurate. And it comes from researchers at MIT. Audio facial recognition, Ryan. <laughs> this is real life. This isn't. This isn't science fiction. Dude, how? Like sonar can't. Like sonar. <laughs> Jesus Christ! God help us. Yeah, you, know, you know, I thought about this. This is kind of cool because it it like shows how they can use our senses against us, like at the base level. And when you look at it that way, it's really like a military attack on you. They're mapping the human condition with my well, voice. Well, it's funny you're talking about using your senses against you. When I want to get into my phone, Ryan, <laughs> some people have facial recognition. You can enter your codes, <laughs> right? You can enter the codes. That's the early way. But it also says you can set up your fingerprint. And if I just put my finger back here, it comes right on. They have your fingerprints on file. No, it's just your phone does. Don't think they don't have that information. Your fingerprint is on file. I guarantee it's, it. It's just your phone. It's just your phone that has it. But we're going to scrub your iCloud to make sure there's no, quote, terrible things on there. We're not going to lift anything else off there. Wink. <laughs> These people. Yo, audio, <laughs> audio mapping <laughs> is crazy. Your face, man. Are they going to be able to tell your eye color from my voice? It's not quite that ac- accurate, but it's... Yet? Not yet. That's what, actually what it says in the article, is that one day will be that accurate. Dude, how long has the military had this? No, oh, I'm, sure, I'm sure this is just new new technology, right? Yeah, I'm sure they didn't use that to kill that guy when he was inches away from his wife from space with a fucking... <laughs> just casually read this stuff at the, on the shitter, and I'm supposed to go to work on Monday happy. This sounds. This all sounds like conspiracies, Ryan. When and, I was going to gun rallies and we would talk gun control over the phones, they would be like, "Listen, we got to talk about this in person, away from phones, because these things are so monitored." And now, now they're mapping my voice. Where's the Where's the imagery to pick up from this voice? Like, is it going to do it off my cell phone speaker? Like, where is there going to be sensors in public that can audio recognition? Is that a violation of privacy? Dude, they're using your senses to map the human condition. Um, I've seen this thing going around. I'm going to tie these together. You ever hear the thing that Skittles are technically all the same flavor and all they do is they add a smell to that certain Skittle to make it taste like lemon? I have not heard that, but that makes sense because that does have an effect on your scent. All right. So if you eat food, is it really your smell that it is or is it really the taste? It's, It's both. All right, so let's say I walk into Walmart and they spray some stuff in there that makes me smell stuff that makes me want to smell like I want to spend more money. I mean, that's what a candle store does. Mmm, good point, David. 
Or when the military <laughs> wanted to develop the quote gay bomb and they wanted to be able to spray it on um, enemy combatants to make them attracted to the same sex so that it would deter them from battle. First of all, that's hilarious. Secondly, <laughs> uh, apparently they never made it, but here I am later with, you, Ryan. with, the, with audio mapping. I'm just going to be able to go outside and cough for the United States military to get a fucking ground reading. Hey, go outside, you know, go outside and cough so I can see what the hell's outside. You know how crazy that sounds with your fucking, your facial recognition with your voice. How are you, where's the camera? Where's the, where are they putting cameras to recognize, is this going to be on my phone? I'm going to go, hello, bloop, bloop, and it's going to know. Oh, they already know anyway. Did they say really why they need to map people's fucking faces with voices? Because you know what? This why is to murder support? people. This is to murder people. Why well, doesn't seem all that important? I think it's just the, the how. I think epic faces voice. with voices, dude. This is AI too. Artificially, this little smart thing that's not going to be smarter than people, but probably is. Oh yeah, they always say they're not going to out smart people, and then they think of like all these scenarios. The AI comes up with like, what was the? Uh, they had an AI that the military made an AI. I gotta see if I can find this. The military made some type of AI device and it created like 40,000 new weapons or something. I forgot what the... <laughs> don't quote me on that exact, but it was something along those lines. It was probably with stuff we already had. I was like, yo, you guys never did put this, put these two things together? Next, like, so you know, battering ramps are back with big steel rods on the roof. Ah, here it is. <laughs> I knew I didn't make this up. AI suggested 40,000 new possible chemical weapons in just six hours. <laughs> It took less than six hours. Uh, if you don't think all this stuff comes from the military, <laughs> it's, not si knew, it's not spy novels. I knew I saw that somewhere. Uh, speaking of conspiracies and things that come from the military, Ryan, I we haven't talked we haven't talked aliens in a long time. It's something we used to talk to, but I did see an article and I thought it was worth talking about. Dave just softly admitted that aliens are a conspiracy by the government. Uh, Am Americans encountering UFOs suffered radiation burns, brain damage, and a secret Pentagon program reported. Uh, <laughs> documents from a 2010 report from the now defunct Advanced Aviation Threat Identification Program, AATIP, a program funded by the Pentagon claims that Americans who encountered UFOs had suffered radiation burns, brain and nervous and system damage. Uh, those documents part of 1500 pages released to the sun, which originally filed a freedom of information act request in 2017 stated there were sufficient incidents slash accidents that have been accurately reported and medical data acquired as to support a hypothesis that some advanced systems are already deployed and opaque to full U S understandings. These documents, for the record, Ryan, come from the government, and the government's saying in these documents that they don't understand these objects because they're not government-created. Boom, aliens are real. Government would never lie to me, David. No, no, especially not. Uh, this is... <laughs> this could be tremendous 4D chess. It could be the government creating fake government documents stating that they don't know that aliens are real, even though they are the aliens. And then when the Sun filed a Freedom of Information Act, they got the fake government document where the government said... This is called compartmentalization. <laughs> because the people researching the alien shit really think they're aliens. Because they're like, dude, look at all these birds. And then it was actually probably a government program, like that Operation... Whorehouse or whatever, when they would drug people with LSD and ask them questions with strippers. I'm sure this has nothing to do highly similar. They could just burn them before they left. Like, oh my god, I got burns from these aliens and slip them LSD. Because they never did that before. So it's probably even the government to go 5D chess, David. The government probably tried brainwashing people to set up this big crazy fucking, I don't know, 
So, yeah, I don't believe any of it. It's all bullshit. It's definitely fake. It's not fake, but it's fake because it's coming from the government. And you know what? Most shit that takes Freedom of Information Acts takes like 20 years. Why am I believing that the one about magic UFOs and flying saucers is all of a sudden... Five. It took a solid five years to get that information. How long did it take them to get the Tea Party documents that prove that the Barack Obama administration and the Department of Justice, I believe, directly targeted Tea Party groups and tried to, like, stop, quote, grassroots movements? Oh, we couldn't have been that long. And it was only them. They were only the ones targeted. It was like 98% of the organizations that were targeted and defunded were Tea Party groups and grassroots movements of right-wing ideologies. Why am I going to believe that this very thing that could set up the... I mean, literally, we're talking... We're talking about the system that has all the pieces in place to make this all just fake bullshit that is really real. Like, really. It could all really have uh, happened, just not been aliens. It was the government is the aliens, literally. Ryan, it sounds like you don't believe this, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to read a quote from a government official. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's a government official. They weren't familiar with the matter at all. Was it people with inside inside sources? Uh, I've got I'm sure to be- these people's names are real and they're not fucking Black Bar somewhere in this document. Officer Black Bar, Sir Black Bar said Black Bar to Black Bar, no, Black can- Bar, Black Bars. They have actual names. Uh, yeah, Scooby Doo character names. I've got to be careful. I can't speak too specifically, but one might imagine that you imagine. get a report from a pilot who says, Lou, it's really weird. This guy's name must be Lou. I was flying and I got close to this thing and I came back home and it was like I got sunburn. I was red for four days. Well, that's a sign of radiation. That's not sunburn. It's a radiation burn. Then a pilot might say if they had got a little closer, Lou, I'm at the hospital. I've got symptoms that are indicative of microwave damage, meaning internal injuries. And even my brain, there's some morphology there. And then you might get somebody who gets real close and says, you know, Lou, it's really bizarre. It felt like I was there for only five minutes, but when I looked at my watch, 30 minutes went by. But I only used five minutes worth of fuel. How is that possible? There's a reason for that. We believe, and it probably has to do with the warping of space and time. The closer you get to one of those vehicles, the more you may begin to experience space-time relative to the vehicle and the environment. So, I mean, there it is. If you don't believe the government document, the government official does have quotes from a pilot. I mean, it's about as solid of uh, evidence as you could possibly get, right? If you and I were to make articles like this, they'd flag us on the internet for bullshit. Like, literally. Well, I mean, if we, as long as we had our information from a leaked internal document... I don't know anything, but all it sounds like is whatever that thing is flying, apparently, in this particular instance, to Lou, the, quote, pilot that is, quote, familiar with whatever matter we're talking about at this current time. Mm-hmm. It was nuclear powered, right? By theory, if it's like microwaves, it's got to run on nuclear energy. We have nuclear reactors on Earth. Why would I not think that the United States government, who could probably drop, you know, I heard they have a thing that they can drop tungsten steel rods from the space and hit continental drift points on the crust of the earth and fuck everything up okay so what do i know but anyways we can make these things i don't think the go i think the government and black ops or organizations could make nuclear powered vehicles that would you know they would probably blow right by pilots just to prove points or something or or to test it or to green light it or to make these documents like a big ass think tank. These people have all the power to do this and release it to the public, but I'm supposed to believe that this Freedom of Information Act is actually releasing all the correct documents. What about the documents linked to these documents? Wait, hold on. Just real quick, Ryan. I know you like reading. Can you see this? Yeah, nuclear powered air. <laughs> <laughs> When was it invented, Dave? It looks like a black well, and white photograph. So it, it's a concept for an aircraft intended to be powered by nuclear energy. The intention was to produce a jet engine that would heat compressed air with heat from fission instead of heat from burning fuel. During the Cold War, the United States and Soviet Union researched nuclear power bomber aircrafts, the greater endurance of which could enhance nuclear deterrence. But neither country created any such operational aircraft, Ryan. It says right here. That we know about. 
And yeah, the Soviet Union, all that stuff, they just left there, right? Like, you know, I'm sure all the stuff the Soviet Union owned never, like, <laughs> transferred hands at all. <laughs> in, oh, in we over, dude, did you see the video by wait. the Chinese reactor where the UFO wait. came and, like, turned it wait. off and turned it back on? Wait, hold on. Uh, in May 1946, the United States Army Air Force has stated or started the Nuclear Energy for the Propulsion of Aircraft Project (NEPA), which conducted studies until the aircraft nuclear propulsion (AMP) program replaced NEPA in 1951. The AMP program included provisions for studying two different types of nuclear-powered jet engines. So they were just checking all this stuff out. I'm sure they didn't do anything with it. Yeah, it probably just was dead in the water. I mean, they're like, why, well, you know, I'm sure after the atomic bomb, they're like, yeah, this is the only thing we can use this for, considering <laughs> we're the military. In in 1957, the Air Force and the U.S. Atomic Energy Commission contracted with the Lawrence Radiation Laboratory to study the feasibility of applying heat from nuclear reactors to ramjet engines. This research became known as Project Pluto. The program was to provide engines for unmanned cruise missiles called SLAM. Uh, Supersonic. (laughs) Known as a drone? We call those drones now. Um, Yeah, so there you go. That's how how that happens. I'm sure it's just aliens. I mean, I'm sure. Aliens are way more possible. Aliens are way more probable. You know, it's not by coincidence either that they target our generation. Now that we're all like in our 30s, they're like, yeah, target the ones that we brainwashed really good already. It didn't work on their parents. So like, Ryan, yeah, man, they're really aliens. There's gonna, we're going to have people doing rituals in cornfields all over America soon, praying that aliens come and abduct them because gas is $30 a gallon. No, aliens are Save me with your nuclear aliens. fission. There's no way. Save me with your nuclear fission. I know, Ryan, you may be skeptical because you just pulled a conspiracy theory out of your ass. Uh, but <laughs> one if you question. Want, there's only one true proof of aliens, and he just bought Twitter. <laughs> uh, Elon Musk becomes Twitter's largest shareholder after a shakeup. Uh, and weirdly, people are are nervous about this. You see people nervous that this is going to affect their free speech on Twitter? Why would it affect his free speech? Well, because he bought it, and now he's on the board. So, they're, oh, you guess you could just buy your way into public policy and private company policy. Well, I thought um, Twitter itself was a free and open platform that allowed the open trans flow of information. No one has, no one of any significance has ever been banned on Twitter, David. So, you well, know. there. Well, there was Alex, Alex Jones. Well, he was just that. And there was Milo. He was a political guy. He was just a gay dude, though. And Didn't and then him. there was um, there's that guy just now. He was temporarily bl- banned. You you put something up about that. Who was temporary? Um, the guy from Project Veritas. He was banned. Oh yeah, the, James O'Keefe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just the guy that gets undercover videos of people. Yeah, oldest. yeah. There were there were a few representatives too that got banned. And media. Oh, the NY Post got banned from sharing an article. Mm. There I'm sure it was all reason, reasonable, right? Yeah. And I'm sure, the, I'm the, sure. The, the president of the United States he got he got banned. But he, he got his Twitter back though, right? No, he's he's not on it. He's still on. Mm. Mm. That's weird how that happened. So what what does Twitter have to worry about if they have such a great track record? Yeah, Twitter. What Twitter? What do we think it is, David? What do you think it is? Why is Twitter worried? Or do you think this is just the smokescreen in the media? Well. Twitter hasn't come out and specifically said they're worried. People, just general activism on the left and media figures on the left and politicians on the left, they have come out and and said how they are nervous about such a such a thing occurring. And I think the reason is obvious. See, here's the thing. Like, <clears throat> I know I've always been like critical of Elon Musk because I'm just not that I'm worried or anything, but like this is obviously showing the power. This is what. We know what this is. They hate it because this is what they're always talking point has always been. Billionaires can just buy their way and then they can have their way and they can do anything they want. And we obviously can sit here and defend or attack that idea as well. But that's <clears throat> I think they got to just kind of stand here on their bullshit ideology because they know the truth of it. They're worried oh. that their agenda is not going to be able to be pushed the same way because now there's actually somebody who seems like they're more red-pilled in a position of obviously the highest position in Twitter now, you know, 
yeah. owning the majority of the stock makes you head of the company. See, uh, not I don't know if it would make you he's a CEO. A CEO, but be but a, he's the largest shareholder. Yeah, so he gets to have a say in the board of directors and all that, and how all that shit works. I'm not real sure all the way, but he's not like CEO or anything. So no. that's the position that has to that would make the decisions for this company probably. But it still is. It is questioning like how many. How many um, billionaires are going to get on the bandwagon, or how many millionaires are going to start? We're going to get locked doors on a studio. It should be in like a bomb shelter. We're, we, that's what we're going to do. We're going to create a studio. It's going to be an underground bomb shelter. Elon Musk getting into Twitter, I think, is a bigger thing. He's got to learn how those social media companies work before he opens up his own version of Twitter. Well, maybe. Or maybe he's just, instead of opening his own, he's just doing this. And maybe, you know, honestly, he could buy into Meta and he can buy into YouTube also and be really helpful. Is it, though, or is it him trying to be in the big club and get corrupted? I don't think that's accurate. All right. I don't know if I trust the guy trying to get us all to Mars. Why? I don't have enough spaceships for everybody. Well, what's going on then? Some of you guys got to stay behind to power the spaceships. He's been, he's been very honest. He said people going to Mars are going to die. <laughs> He's extremely honest about it. He said the first people going to Mars are going to die. <laughs> it's a very low likelihood of, of survival. Well, Matt Damon goes there, right? Doesn't I hope so. We should send real movie stars there and they can uh, just cut the film the way they want. God, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, that's that's literally it. I don't, what, um, what's all I got? That's all you got. That's it. Well, luckily for me, speaking of movie stars... It's kind of the same thing, but not really. Rapper in particular. David knows I like T.I., the rapper, T.I., hip-hop star, T.I. So uh, we spoke the other week about the little slappity, slap, slappity, slap incident that has been gripping the nation. And we talked uh, in particular here, and uh, I know that I saw it other places, which made me want to talk about it on our program, was the death of comedy and people trying to push the lines of comedy in particular. Mm-hmm. I guess in the 90s, comedy got like this. Like There was actual violence. Like People were storming stages more, and like comics would get beat up after shows. That's probably when they started putting securities in bars around the same time. Not to mention the 90s were violent anyways. Some of the crime bills that Joe Biden helped pass reflect the times of the 90s. Um, and obviously all their bullshit gun control. But uh, So T.I. apparently has been getting into stand-up comedy for about a year. Really? Yeah, I didn't know this. I haven't even looked into more of it, but Avin Preach is a YouTube channel. They're comedians on YouTube. They're pretty funny. They're dudes out of Toronto. I've just spoken about them before because they got like good insights on a lot of stuff. But they're like comedians, right? And they always have this kind of same thing we do. Weekly commentary on the hot issue or whatever with like a political twist, uh, with a comedic twist on it. And uh, T.I., long story short, he stormed the stage on a comedian that made a joke about him. T.I. Yeah, did? Yeah, T.I. has been in the news for uh, him, him like trying to sexually assault somebody, apparently. And his wife was like a part, they were trying to blackmail the person. So like the, the, per, the chick on stage made a joke about it. And there's a video of T.I. going up on stage. He grabs, he grabs the microphone out of her hand. And before that, he had his own microphone. He was talking shit to her and stuff. So it's just like... <sighs> I like him as a hip hop artist. You know what I mean? Like yeah. short of that what you do privately is a different thing that has reflected. You know, I haven't like listened to him like the way I. Regardless of the point, I can separate art from the person. Like that's never been. Yeah, a thing. I, I can do the same, and you almost have to when you're yeah. on uh, our particular political side. <laughs> yeah, you do. You know, and that's what uh, I'll get to something a little later. But that's where like some of these other people that are getting involved in the in the media. Of like producing entertainment are so valuable, but uh, Ti, uh, I'm able to separate it, right? But it's really sad to see like somebody, especially famous, his renown, his money, his composure, like all the, like it. Com- There's a reason the Greeks used had comedy and drama was like their only. Those were the only two types of plays, really, comedy and drama. So we're watching the death of comedy. I do agree with that. Yeah, it's crazy that you know people that have hundreds of millions of dollars think they can do whatever the fuck they want. Did you did you see kind of along the same lines of these things? But apparently, Amy Schumer was going to tell a joke at the Grammys, maybe, and it was 
whoever in charge of the apparently people have to authorize all these things and whoever was supposed to authorize it said no that's a step too far um, that's like places that promote free speech and everybody to have their it own was a, it was about an alec baldwin something about alec baldwin but um she was very upset by the fact she couldn't tell this joke which i think is funny because she's been extremely anti-free speech this shows these people don't actually understand what the hell it means. The easiest way to say is free speech. The true definition of free speech is the right to offend everybody without violent re repercussions. Yeah, these people don't know what this freedom means. They don't know what they've been given. They obviously don't understand it. But then these are the very people that tell us that we need to follow certain political figures because they're going to lead us the way and stuff. This just... It's just perfect parallels to how they've taken over the American condition and like how they use celebrities and these people that push they push the values that these people don't themselves practice. And this is yeah. what you call hypocrisy and political Stockholm syndrome. Yeah, so, it's the it's the classic uh rules for the not for me. Yeah, exactly. Um it's just really once again, it's really sad to see. And not to mention, I've been preached talked about this. TIs and comedy. And apparently there is comedians out there that heckle other comedians when they're on stage. And it's like the idea that even people in your own art form would self-sabotage you is fucking ridiculous when they are literally the cusp of free speech in particular. Dave Chappelle was just the iron lightning rod for everybody a few months ago. Mm -hmm. And then it was Chris Rock this few weeks. There's a reason this is like more common, and it's comedians. Joe Rogan before, Will, uh, before Chris Rock. Mm-hmm. I mean, why are why are we seeing all this is within a year of the president being in power? Well, it's I think weird. the 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 answer is, in my opinion, stand up comedy is kind of like the last the last bastion of of free speech. It's like the last place where it's finally supposed to be okay to say what you want to say, whether it's offensive or not. It's kind of it was always the one understood. You know, you, you can't really say certain things in uh you know in a school or you can't say certain things in wherever because it's inappropriate it's offensive in the workplace whatever comedy was kind of like the last the last place where you pretty much got to say whatever you wanted to say yeah and it bleeds over into the culture when these comedy clubs push like a certain envelope it gives people in the real world at work at school and at all these other places that you're not supposed to be inappropriate like that little leeway to understand what's all right and what's not okay to say at that moment because we've been able to see somebody else flush it out. This would be like what Jordan Peterson says, we evolved by watching an imitation because we watched each other. And, and that's where like the whole thing of like embarrassment and all these emotions you feel and like anxiety. This is from like, those are the things we develop biologically to tell us we're not doing the right thing. But like comedy is that with free speech. And there's a reason they're targeting it. Yeah. I remember hearing Billy Corgan on the Alex Jones program. He was on Alex a couple times about free speech. And he said they always come after the artists first. Always. I wonder why. Here we are. We're seeing it under a certain presidency. When I was told the guy before that was the one that was going to shut down free speech. I don't no. think Trump passed one thing that limited freedom except bullshit gun control. Speaking of federal government and overreaching power, uh, I seen an article in the New York Times that talked about how two dudes from like some Middle Eastern country or Israeli or whatever duped the Secret Service. I'm pretty sure they posed the Secret Service agents. Members of the Secret Service were placed on leave after receiving gifts, including rent-free apartments from the men. An affidavit said one claim ties to Pakistani intelligence, prosecutors said. So the Homeland, Homeland Security officers in Washington duped several members of the Secret Service, providing them with tens of thousands of dollars in gifts, including referee apartments, blah, blah, blah. Four members of Secret Service, the agency charged with protecting the presidency and the president's family, have been placed on administrative leave while the case being investigated. One of the men, um, he has a very ethnic-sounding name, <laughs> Arian uh, Fesser Doff. Did you say uh, Arian? A-R-I-A-N. That's, that's not good. He's got to change that. Hey, Arian? Arian? I feel like you're supposed to not say that. Offered to buy a $2,000 sight rifle for the agent. A sign, and uh, for an agent assigned to the Jill, Bi Jill Biden's protective detail, according to the affidavit. Well, that's good. Yeah, I'm sure uh, Jill Biden's not important to the president. So they were, they were bribed. 
Uh, both men appeared by video conference on Thursday at the hearing in federal court in Washington where prosecutors said that Mr. Ali told witnesses that he had connections to the inner services intelligence in Pakistan. Mr. Ali also held several visas that had been issued by Pakistan and Iran. Pa prosecutors said the FBI arrested the man, both of whom are United States citizens, on Wednesday in South Southeast Washington. The two-year scheme began in February 2020 and unraveled recently. Well, that's... They have intended to use their false and fraudulent affiliation with Department of Homeland Security to integrate themselves with members of federal law enforcement and the defense community. Mr. Ellis did not say why the men carried out the imper uh, impersonations. So maybe maybe I'm misremembering this, but didn't didn't wasn't there also a Secret Service scandal during the Obama administration? Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, I, then, guess th I guess it wouldn't change because it's just as... It's the same administration. <laughs> <laughs> March, March 2014, three Secret Service agents responsible for protecting Obama in Amsterdam are placed on leave after a night of drinking in violation of Secret Service rules. One of the agents is passed out drunk in the hallway. <laughs> it it makes me wonder what these dudes did for them to just suicide their career. I mean, this is like how they've always done it. This is how it's always been done. Except now we have Snapchat, so they have to bury it and they have to do it other ways. Like there had to be a reason why these dudes, out of anybody in Washington, I'm sure these, I'm sure more people weren't caught in this. This aren't. This isn't the. Uh, there's not only two dudes in Washington trying to bribe Secret Service members. Oh my God! There's so many of them. April, April of 2012, eight Secret Service agents doing advance work for a president trip to summit in Columbia lose their jobs after allegations that some took prostitutes from a strip club back to their hotel rooms. May 2013, a Secret Service supervisor leaves a bullet in a woman's room at the Hay Adams Hotel, which overlooks the White House, and allegedly tries to force his way into the room to retrieve it. Uh, September 16th, 2014, and perhaps... For those people who don't know about that, we just breezed over something. If they could trace that round back to that hotel room, that guy could get a felony. Because probably in that state, in that township, if it's anything like New York, New York, they know that you have a certain pistol. And if they catch you with ammunition, because you can only buy ammunition for the guns that are on your pistol p permit in the state of New York. So if they find that you're just leaving the ammo around, they can come after your permit. For a Secret Service agent, a felony is obviously everything. Like, it would destroy huh. <laughs> like everybody else, but... In perhaps the most chilling of Secret Service lapses, a security contractor with a gun and an assault record gets on the elevator with the president during a trip to Atlanta. <laughs> and then, of course, there was uh, in 2014 when the guy jumped the fence with a knife. Um, yeah, that's um, quality Secret Service hiring they do. Yeah, I'm sure uh, hiring women and everything else has nothing to do with it. I seen an article I sent to Dave earlier this, in the week. It said Democrats had a strategy to flip Georgia. And one of their strategies was to pay people to talk politics with their friends. It was one of the strategies. I'm sure it, it's, yeah, I'm sure mail-in ballots is the other. <laughs> they had another one that worked flawlessly. Look, Dave and I do this, done it for free and all this stuff. But this is literally the definition well, of thought police. And like... Technically, Ryan, it was not for free. We got paid. Hey. <laughs> hey. Monetize. Not really. Um, <laughs> one one platform, if you can guess. Yeah, it was the free speech one. <laughs> so flipping the strategy with uh, Georgia, do you know how much mobilization and information and technology and connections and community guidelines and grassroots... Do you know... Like the apparatus of political tactics it would take to organize, fund, and then to do this? I could guess. It'd probably be pretty big. Almost like you need a meta network of data to get it done. Hmm. That helps. I'm sure that... It's I mean, we had, when we had Christian on, though, that's exactly what they do. You would just so need that on a very grand scale. Yeah, and paying people to do anything is obviously the great motivator. But it's crazy to me that they're going to pay the very people that they're stealing from because they're wrecking everybody in taxes. It's just, 
you, we got to be careful. Like this is they're li they're literally telling you that they're putting agents of people to spew propaganda to their to their moms and everybody else to get them voting to think a certain way, and we're all just supposed to be okay with that. For anyone who. That is not free thought. That is not free flowing of ideas. The ideas for things that naturally grow in the ether, not be fucking promoted and paid to be spewed. That's propaganda. Political ideologies aren't like Nike and fucking Adidas that you can just have a billboard campaign for the betterment of your shoe company. We're talking about ideologies and history that nobody even thinks about anymore. Yeah. I mean, for people who uh, who watched the show early on, they could remember... The phone call we got mid show. <laughs> I don't remember that guy's name. I love, no, I love I love stuff like that though. These people just call me out of the blue. I got one about the uh, they're going to all the electric or whatever, and I basically told the guy that you can tell him to fuck off, and I should be able to burn wood. And I hung up the phone. You know. <laughs> Speaking of not having enough stuff to do, uh, my daughter had a little coffee cough. Okay, so naturally you do the uh, old school remedy of trusting um, not the science but ancestral knowledge, and that is ginger ale crackers and chicken noodle soup. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those work. Yeah, those always work for whatever reason. I don't need science. I just know that my grandmother's grandmother grandmother did well, it. Well, here's the deal. It is science, and the reason is it fuels your immune system. That's conspiracy, Kirsten. So I go to Wegmans, which is the greatest grocery store ever, because fuck Walmart. And no saltine crackers. They only have the unsalted saltine crackers. So you had to salt them. I'm not salt and salted, unsalted crackers. That's, <laughs> that's insane. It's a whole waste of my time. So instead of doing that, I drove to another store. And they didn't have the big long sleeves of salted crackers either. Except at this store, they had a little note. That said, due to high demand, manufacturer is low on stock. Oh, yes, the classic high demand. But they got fucking unsalted crackers fine. The demand has changed, apparently. So I, ha I had to buy the things that are eight packs of like more snack-sized bags of saltine crackers because they didn't have the, in the big long sleeves. I know it sounds foolish to be complaining about this. Yeah. I was grateful just to get crackers. But it's great. It's not high to It's not... It's not... The manufacturer's not out of crackers. They just can't get them to the store. <laughs> uh, Daily Mail whistleblower. I got an article sent to me. Talked about how there was the Hunter Biden laptop. He was speaking about the stuff on there. Just the pull this thing up. we're allowed to admit is real now? Yeah, uh, Daily Mail exclusive whistleblower who handled Hunter Blo Hunter's abandoned laptop to congressman and DailyMail.com reveals he has 450 gigabytes of deletable material, deleted material including 80,000 images and videos, and has fled to Switzerland fearing retaliation from the White House. Yeah, those. Uh, so I don't know if the article gets specific, but Rudy Giuliani actually talked about this because believe it or not, he had information on all this. Um, no, th there's only one guy in the whole world, I'm sure, that had information. No, all of Congress. Uh, so, <laughs> apparently, allegedly, I guess is the word we're legally obligated to use, allegedly, there are pornographic images more concerning and more specifically uh, I don't know how, I, how you want to spin this, Ryan. They're not quite of age. Like, like Epstein's girls? A little younger. Uh, his name is Whistleblower Jack Maxey. Gave, I'm sure that's not a real name. Gave DailyMail.com a copy of a hard drive from Bunner, uh, Hunter Biden's abandoned laptop in spring of 2001. DailyMail.com has published dozens of the stories exposing Hunter's drug use, sex obsession, and questionable business dealings. For the past two years, Maxey, not his real name, has been in hiding in Zurchin, Switzerland, working with IT experts to dig out more data from the laptop from hell. Uh, he says he intends to post them all online in a database in the coming weeks. Maxey says he has found 450 gigabytes of erased material, including 80,000 images and videos and more than 120,000 archived emails. Former podcast host says he fears for retaliation from the Biden administration. He says that after contacting DailyMail.com about the laptop last year, black suburban SUVs appeared outside his house. Oh, that's weird. 
I'm sure I'm sure they're there just talk to him, right, Dave? That's probably just his neighbor bought a new suburban. I'm actually a former co-host of ex Donald Trump advisor Steve Bannon podcast The War Room. Claim seen his colleague have about four hundred and fifty gigabytes of This is so crazy. It's so crazy to see everything go full circle. Uh Will Smith and Jada Pinkett can Jada Will Smith drama continued. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm sure you've seen there was a video of her released this week, shit talking them, apparently. Um, yeah. I've heard various reports that it's like an old video or whatever. Uh, Will Smith was banned from 10 years from the Academy and all this stuff. I told you. You can't satisfy women, man. They always want more. That woman has put that dude through hell. It's not worth it, boys. It's not. It's really not worth it. Um, speaking of not worth it, uh, I was at a bar this week, and the Masters were on. Yeah, that's yeah. Tiger Woods is back. Obviously, that was the thing. Um, I didn't care. I've never. I, I actually enjoyed golf for one reason. I understood that people that watch that have money, so it made me like it more. Because if I want money, I should probably probably try to watch the stuff that people with money watch. <laughs> well, what made me realize it was the commercials. Because I never seen any commercials like these, David. Scientology commercials. All the car commercials were about the newest sports car style electric vehicles and that's when i seen it i seen the first 100 percent electrical 600 miles to the one charge mercedes future electronic fucking spaceship fold wings with vibrating seats for wife's pleasures but seriously powered by google well, it was yeah. like so i want to ask people I don't think it's a good idea that we trust transportation to the very people that battle misinformation. Why? What could possibly go wrong, right? You're going to lock me out of my car when I put something on the internet you don't like. No, oh, well, I mean, they could. I suppose they could do that. But, Ryan, that car is your... Uh, that car would be your property. But by 2034, David, I will own nothing, and I will have no privacy, and I'm the happiest oh. I'll ever be. Yeah, but you'll be the happiest you ever will be happiest ever thing that i won't be able to talk about how unhappy i am of course you're going to be happy when the only thing i could say is happy things everything's fine (laughs) 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 on a one-way train to hell with hell laptops one in four apples wouldn't vote for biden if they knew about a laptop that has 450 half a terabyte of information yeah well i mean for people who don't know a terabyte, I mean, that's just a handful of large video games. Yeah, just 1,000 gigabytes. In pictures and videos. Yeah, uh, the electric cars in Google, with Google being powered by Google, they will lock you out of your car. Or, you know what, how do I know that that little oh, all-electric display isn't lying to me and says my car needs to be charged when the battery's charged because you don't like my opinions on the internet? And if you don't think they're going to do that... Speaking of automobiles, the New York State is uh, set to have a seven-month gas ban tax holiday. Seven-month gas tax holiday. Meaning oh, so the state- they're going to take all gas tax off for seven months? Not all, just the oh. gas tax on, just the sales gas tax on unleaded and diesel fuel. So if you drive premium gas, you're still going to pay the, the So I would, I would, I would be, did no different for me. Why is it all right that in Pennsylvania? No, I, I take premium fuel. <laughs> oh, look at the capitalist Dave driving on premium fuel, having cleaner cleaner valves on his vehicle <laughs> uh my main question is why stop at seven months if the new york state budget is so sound and secure that we can just pay for a 300 trillion billion dollar stadium to keep the bills here even though erie county can afford it on our current tax rates Ooh, can we talk about that well seriously though they don't need the money they're just gonna what? let seven months this is I have never in my life there was never a moment during the Trump presidency that they're like they're taking little they're taking rid of um, taxes. No, everything was cheap. Everything was cheap. And now this administration like, oh, yeah, we'll just have you pay less in tax. You are making this shit more money with taxes. Why stop? Why stop at seven months? Take the sales tax off. Get all gas forever. 
No, no, that's not going to happen. I'm sure good. that would help people in the transportation industry or those people that you always say you want to help most, like pizza drivers that live on a minimum wage, which I read an article today that debunked the shit out of that. So people are mad at Pagulas, right? Uh, I just seen a thing. They bought a yacht or whatever. They're one of the richest freaking they're, franchises. It's just... Yeah, it's their money. Of course they bought a yacht. Yeah. People are mad at the wrong people. People should be mad at the state and the county who gave the money away. Why are you mad at the Pagulas? Of course they're going to take the money. You just gave them $800 million. Well, teacher, blame instead of corrupt bureaucracies that uh, we appoint. Yes, that's the real. That's the real reason. They can't blame Mark Polencars because then they would have to admit that they elected Mark Mark Polencars, who has bad policies, and thereby default the voters don't know what the fuck they're doing, even though they claim to know that they're doing it for the children and for women and for people of color and for LGBT WXYZ people. This is why they push identity politics, actually. It makes it so easy to just broad brush corruption when everybody's got a little label to hide behind. Yeah, this is, it's a good point, Dave, that this is really a failure of um, elected officials. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For sure. Like, honestly, the negotiation, well, they were going to leave, be like, well, <laughs> and, and goodbye. To be, clear, to be clear, no one actually cares, right? And what, what, I, what I mean by that is, pe- at least people I know, they're still going to go to the games, I bet. I bet they're going to the new stadium. They're not going to boycott it. So how how mad are they? They're not mad. Yeah, and it's... I don't know why we hate wealth. I know why, because we don't have it. Maybe they should buy their own stadiums. Maybe. Maybe. I'm not saying they shouldn't. Yeah, that's a discussion. mad at the wrong people. Exactly. Maybe they should. Maybe that should be brought up to... Maybe that should be a federal thing, that federal... The, uh, not that I want more government, but we already have all the people in place, right? Well, let them talk to the NFL and say, well, maybe we can work out bargaining. I don't know. Maybe that's where guys like Trump and other businessmen, if they got into politics instead of making billions, because that's what they'd rather do instead of make $500,000 a year as a politician. Yeah, Maybe they could have worked something else out. Hey, Mr. Pagula, you buy this new $1.4, $1.5 billion stadium in Erie County. Erie County's not going to tax it. State of New York won't tax it. And you have to use all people in New York. Just employ all local New Yorkers. There you go. But they don't they don't actually care about stuff like that. And 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 I seen a thing speaking of that. I'm a tradesman, obviously. That's all I seen was the union. All the un- unions gonna yeah. Now you know why they have to negotiate. Because there's all the fucking unions. We don't need them. But yeah, that stadium could this. easily be that stadium could easily be seven hundred and fifty mil. <laughs> yeah. You won't get benefits unless you have a union. Yeah, because everything's fucking crazy. If I kept more of my money, I could afford everything. But this is getting back to the idea of limited government that people don't want to discuss. Yeah, I don't know what to do about billionaires just, you know, raping off the taxpayers, but David is a good point. But also there in itself, just the bills in itself brings renown to our town. Mm-hmm. So what are you going to do? Who has the power there? Erie County or Terry Pagula? I don't know. I don't know if Terry would have moved. Would he would he move them all? Think of how much he has tied in the area. You think he's gonna put all of that aside? The great thing about Buffalo is for the size of our market, we're huge, right? Especially for the bills. But we're right by an international border. Mm-hmm. The thing that would fuck him is everything what everybody else says is well, we're not a tax friendly state. Yeah. What was he gonna do? Move him to Austin or something? I mean I I just don't see that happening. Yeah. Speaking of moving to Austin, uh, you already brought up that Supreme Court girl was confirmed. Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't want to tear it into it, but it was done. Political, yeah. literally the most open, transparently political appointed Supreme Court justice in the history of America. I'm glad she's a black female, but let's be real here. Well, she doesn't know that though. Um, Erie County. I seen an article that Channel Four posted that Erie County was buying eleven thousand schools air purifying systems to help combat the next wave of any variants or anything else. Mm, that's good. Why didn't we do this at the first time? At the first well, place, they didn't have the science, right? China had a big outbreak of uh, COVID. Did you see that? No, I didn't hear anything about it. I think that means one of two things: one, it's been happening the entire time, and they haven't reported the numbers. Hmm. Just probably true. Or Do you think two, they had numbers? Since everybody stayed inside, nobody built up an immunity to the virus. Hmm. 
that's science. <laughs> it's amazing. Things 150 years old, we're told the, that we don't know anything about them. Yeah, this is all new science to us. Really? V- viral science is new? <laughs> yeah, and this just goes to show, once again, with government overreach and corruption. I mean, they're openly doing things that they could have done a long time ago to mitigate the problems, and we can blame supply line features and all this shit. But why are they buying everything now when everything is super expensive? When this was like a very early stage. Hmm. Air purification, remember, wear a mask, save a life. Why aren't we masking, like, sucking all the shit out of the air correctly? I've worked in paint booths that can suck air paint out of, that can literally suck millionth point zero 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 one degree molecule millionth of a particle out of the air. You Don't could probably, there, there's some good enough, you could probably go in there and spray without even having a mask on. <laughs> Hey, you can watch the paint come off the gun if you sucks right into the floor. Yeah. Like, don't tell me that we didn't have this idea to begin with. You just didn't like it because you couldn't lock down society and spend trillions of dollars. I see. Uh, I see. I see. Uh, sorry. I'm sure you've seen the same thing I've seen about uh, the Russians accepting some kind of cryptos and uh, also accepting the do- uh, dollar of the Chinese yen. Yeah, they're also. Uh bouncing back on their own currency. Hmm. I wonder why. Um, I also see a thing that they're allowing imitation McDonald's is and imitation uh, Ikea's and everything, and they've opened up uh, like everybody to be able to legally pirate off Netflix and pirate. Yeah, they're turning into China is what they're doing. <laughs> yeah. This is like you know what like fuck you this is like the same reason why apple goes over there and say oh no we got to work with the communists because they're just going to do their own thing because they are going to miss out on all the yeah. money it's going to be great they're going to have all their own knockoff stuff yeah it's crazy i've been driving all over the place and i see more ukrainian flags hanging than american flags you know it's just these people will care about anything they're told to care about yeah we speaking of we kind of found that out here talking about oh look at it's ukrainian no American flags. No American flag, but they got the gay one and the Ukrainian one. Well, the two most important, really. <laughs> so I had something on the Pandora Papers. I don't have my phone in front of me right now to pull it up, but it was basically talking about how these hedge funds can use like uh, people that aren't in... Um, the people within companies that are within companies, like outside contractors, right, that go and have little meetings with people. And this is how, like, shell corporations and all these people move all their money. Uh, I bring it up. Maybe more will come out. Maybe not. But this is kind of the stuff I figure was buried in all the news this week. But uh, the Pandora Papers, I referenced it a little while ago, and it's basically one of the largest ways and just really discussed how the, the elites keep all their money and how they funnel everything. Um. So, yeah, I got two other things before December attainment. Obama at the White House. Yeah. Uh, Daily Wire. Uh, I seen all the stuff from them. That's pretty much where I first seen it. But that dude looked like a celebrity. Well, he looked like the president is what he looked like. That's exactly what he looked like, David. It was kind of funny watching Biden follow him around like a lost puppy. Yeah, it was a little sad, too. That guy's like, I mean, I know we don't put down people, but. You know, it was funny. There was a. This is like one of the my favorite things I've ever seen. Obama was talking to somebody. Joe Biden walked up to him, put his hand on his shoulder for like a long time. And then like he didn't get acknowledged. So he just turned away and stared at a wall. <laughs> <laughs> most elected president. The most elected president ever. Dude, Harris was loving it too, standing next to the Lord and Savior, Barack Obama. Dude, yeah, oh, yeah. smile, dude. The whole face just predatory if that don't show you i don't know what does body language is everything right yeah did anybody treat biden like he was the president does anybody listen to him like he's the president all right last thing before this entertainment daily wire is going mainstream I just read an article today that spoke, uh, it was a Forbes article that actually Ben Shapiro and Daily Wire shared to their social media platforms. And it was uh, from Forbes and talked about how they released their internal numbers of how many people subscribed to the Daily Wire. And it was 600,000 people. Yeah. That's how many people went out of their way to subscribe. Paying for content. Correct. Bring it. 
bring it. They have more people paying than CNN has watching. Yes. (laughs) And that woke that that's startling, but it's also showing the idea that conservative ideas are not a fringe right wing extreme point of view. The fringe extremist ideas like fitness and freedom. Yeah, as grooming, we were as we were told, grooming's not part of that, but it is no, on one side. Of the that's aisle. on the other side. <laughs> Why stop at fourth grade? It's a really good Biden, question. Hunter Biden allegedly has half a terabyte of grooming photos. <laughs> that guy's probably getting groomed by his dad. <laughs> Dude, what if Obama was caught jigging Hunter on that laptop? Uh, anyways, back to uh, most conservative Christian values here. Uh, Daily Wire is the new mainstream. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. Ben Shapiro did it. He got it. Good job, Ben Shapiro. Uh, that's him and Michael Knowles, right? Is that the dude? Yeah, uh, he's on there. Him and uh, Jeremy Boring or something? What's I don't know. There's a handful of them. Matt Walsh was part of Daily Wire. Yeah, but like I'm in the CEO. They're co-CEOs or something. Him and Ben oh, Shapiro the owner. Gotcha. Um. I don't know, it's just cool to read, considering I've been following Shapiro for like five years now. You know, maybe not that long, but I, I followed Crowder before him, so mm-hmm. that was you, and then Shapiro was the natural second. You know, most people go the other way, probably, but uh, it's just cool to see the death of the old media, the rise of the new one, and uh, that's like the aspiration right there, you know, is this, um, it's obvious the subscription model works, that's why all these companies do it, Netflix and Microsoft with Game Pass, and you know, there's a reason why. And uh, we spoke, I think, last week. They were going to invest $100 million in making content for education. Uh, I'm sorry, for entertainment, not just like the political stuff and, and the way they're doing it. So, um, yeah, we're literally watching the, the rise of like a new Hollywood in a weird way. It's kind of cool. The entertainment this week. I got a real one and then I got like a spiritual one. Oh. So, uh, Dave, you're a Star Wars fan, right? Yeah. Okay. So, I always heard The Mandalorian was good. Yeah, so, I haven't watched it. All right, I never watched it. But, I I'm watched... I'm a pretty classic fan, to be honest. Yeah? I didn't like yeah, I... a lot of the newer stuff so far. Yeah, I stopped after episode 8 of the new Star Wars. I obviously like the three originals from like when our parents were growing up and then our three originals one two and three loved all six of those and then seven uh was it seven eight nine yeah seven was eight, eight was no nine i never seen so it's supposed to be better yeah it's supposed to be and i wouldn't know um so anyways my cousin and everybody's telling me mandalorian's great and all this stuff no mm-hmm. i didn't feel like starting a series but i was laying on I mean, a couch bill, Bur- day. bill burr's in it so yeah, I didn't watch The Mandalorian, but what I did watch was the book of Boba Fett. Mm, okay. That caught my eye just because Boba Fett's badass. So I made it through the first episode of that. It was kind of cool. It's cool to see a different layer of storytelling. Um, I don't know how I feel about it overall. I don't know if I was like super sucked in that I want to. I kind of think I realized that uh, I'm more into fantasy than sci-fi as I've aged, as much as I still like it, and it's all cool. I think I just generally like fantasy storytelling much more um but with that being said my real summer team this week i was out of town for work this week uh, i was in elmira new york it's uh, <laughs> about three hours from me dave i don't know where you live in pennsylvania and everything or if it's like a suburb or more rural suburb or like the the community out there but i know like Spence, pennsylvania's got the sparse population right and all these little pocket towns right yeah and elmira's kind of got that feel even though it's a little bit of a city i looked it up my town of Depew is bigger than the area I was staying at as far as location of size, but the yeah. population was smaller. Like Depew's population is smaller, but we're over a larger area. So it kind of like put in perspective what I was dealing with. But, dude, I got to level with you, man. I spent time down there, and uh, I was down there at the end of last year through the beginning of this year, a little bit in January. And I haven't, back, uh, I haven't been back since then. And now that the weather's nice. When I was down there before, it was super cold and everything else, and Christmas, so you're saving money. So I uh, I went to a couple bars. You know, mm-hmm. I went out to some restaurants and kind of just, like, it was cool to, like, fall in love with a country town. Yeah. You know, like, it, it I don't know, it kind of reminded me. 
it's like I became a regular. You know what I mean? These people, I go to the same sandwich shop every time I'm there. Like, I don't know. It was just like cool to like get that experience of like almost pump, becoming a part of like a different community somewhere. I really like uh, took it for appreciation because uh, not everybody gets to uh, see different parts of the world or anything like that, or even different parts of their own state. And I'm out of town for work, having new experiences. I'm away from my family, so like. I'm almost out of my comfort zone. I have to like make a family out there. I'm staying with coworkers that are housemates with people that I barely know. So it's just like that whole uh, like adapting thing. And I'm just really trying to embrace it. But I went on a lot of walks around there. It's just real hilly. And I just, uh, I was just really appreciative of like uh, where we're from and like my friends and family and, you know, people that watch the program. I was thinking of, about our podcast last week and the weeks before and just kind of you know, assessing them, trying to be better, trying to figure out a way through and doing that in all areas of my life. But it helped me like get away. It was weird. Like even though I'm away from work and, and working a lot, it's still a little head clear. And I think it's only possible in that, like that little country town. It made me realize that not everybody's so busy and not everybody's in a rush to get somewhere. And it was kind of nice to like brush shoulders with people that slowed down a little bit. So I appreciate everybody. Uh, Dave and Ryan, December 17, 73. If you guys made it to end, I appreciate that the most. Uh, you like the video, share the video. Follow us on Rumble, tw- uh, YouTube, and Facebook. Mostly Rumble. Mostly Rumble. I'll Please see you guys. Rumble. I'll see. I'll see you guys there for the premiere of Seven Eastern. And yeah, thank you, Dave, for your time, and thank you, everybody. Thanks, Ryan. Yeah, man.